Uh, this carcass that we're looking at here is an example of a, a Holstein animal that was not fed uh, Zilmax or, or Zopaterol hydrochloride for the last 20 days of the finishing period. And if you look at this ribeye in, in closer detail, you'll see that it has some angularity to it and, and it's somewhat narrow and a little bit lackluster for a, a center of the plate uh, presentation. Uh, if you look at the, the round, uh, the animal has uh, lacking a little bit in, in muscular conformation, in plumpness, and in thickness. And in contrast, if we, if we can move across to the animal at the, uh, at the other side of the room, we'll see a change in, in musculature and a change in, in the plumpness and thickness of, of the ribeye and the strip loin. In, in contrast to the, uh, the non-Zilmax fit animal, uh, this steer right here is a Holstein that was fed Zilmax uh, for the last 23 days of the finishing period, followed by a three-day withdrawal. And as compared to the, uh, the previous ribeye, this is, is thicker and it is plumper. Uh, you can see that same effect uh, when looking at the, the round of the animal. And this works by muscle hypertrophy. Uh, the, the muscle diameter of each muscle fiber in this animal was increased uh, a little over three microns. And uh, as each muscle fiber increased in diameter, the plumpness and the thickness of each muscle in this animal uh, became larger and it improved in muscle conformation. And, and this animal here doesn't look like a Holstein anymore. It looks more like a native beef type animal now.